A Southworth duplex boiler feed pump service, part four. There is a problem with the water chest o-ring seals. This is due to the cylinder cover gland being too deep. While dismantling these parts, I saw graphite and yarn fitted to make up the difference in the gland hole depth. Normally, I would fit more graphite yarn in this area, but fitting two o-rings in each gland seemed to be a better option. A few years ago, in a small way, I used to commercially sell the vertical 6-inch Southworth pumps. These pumps were built for me by a friend of mine who was disabled at the time. He was a proper engineer and the pumps were built to an incredibly high standard. I even sold one to the Weir Company, famous for the manufacture of steam boiler feed pumps called Weir Pumps. My friend, being a proper engineer, built these pumps exactly to the drawing and on every pump he made, the glands leaked. On each pump, I would remove the gland and put some graphited yarn in on top of the o-ring. If you look carefully at this image, you can actually see the graphited yarn underneath the original worn o-rings. If you are thinking of adding graphited yarn to a leaky pump, put it on top of the o-rings, not underneath. Doing it that way worked for me. I want to show you something. I thought maybe I should put smaller diameter o-rings in, on top of the correct size o-rings underneath. I was, however, a bit concerned that when I pushed the threaded ends of the piston rods into these tight glands, the smaller diameter o-rings could possibly be damaged. Just like this, in fact, no good at all. I'm going to use what, in my opinion, is a better option. Use two o-rings the correct size. If this doesn't work, I can just slacken off the gland cover, cut out the first o-ring and replace it with some graphite yarn. I would like to mention that there is a much easier way to change these o-rings in the glands without dismantling the engine. I'm really tempted at this stage to say, but I'm not going to tell you how to do that. But I will tell you how to do it. Simply take a brand new o-ring and a very sharp scalpel. Simply cut the o-ring with the scalpel then just wind it around the piston rod. Quite simple, but I prefer to do the job properly. That's why I'm doing it this way. In this clip, the glands are fitted but not fully tightened up. Really, they don't need to be fully tightened up. The pressure of the O-ring against the gland cover is sufficient to stop the nuts from working loose. Here I'm checking the tightness of the piston rod through the gland. And both of the piston rods feel about the same. Before I started dismantling this pump, I did notice that one side was much stiffer than the other. This, however, is nothing to do with the glands. I'm pretty sure it's because the nuts on the three shafts that hold the two halves of the pump together were not set right. I will take great pains to make sure that everything lines up perfectly when I put the pump back together. The gasket material is absolutely shot at this end. This is a steam cylinder end, so it's obviously got hot, and the gasket material is dropping to bits. It's really important when you scrape old gasket material away from the ends of cylinders or cylinder covers not to damage them. It's top tip time. Mahogany is a hardwood, and it's quite good for scraping away old gasket material, but it's not as hard as the metal, so it doesn't damage it. I often use a Stanley knife blade, and I'm always very careful not to cut myself. In this application, the piece of hardwood is fine. It removed all of the residue of the old gasket. This should be another top tip. When dismantling one of these pumps, start at the steam cylinder end, because there are two holes in each of the pistons. Not only can you hold the piston and piston rod solid using a pair of circlip pliers like these, while you undo the nut at the water cylinder end, followed by undoing the nut at the steam cylinder end, finally removing the steam cylinder piston using the circlip pliers. Before removing the steam cylinder pistons, I refitted the water cylinder pistons in place and fitted the lock nuts. I only held the piston rigid with the circlip pliers to tighten the lock nuts. I've temporarily reassembled the engine, but I'm not going to mess about with the alignment just yet. In this clip you can see that the piston rings in the steam cylinder end were not worn at all. I think these have been replaced at some time in the pump's history. I'm going to try and preempt some comments. Why, using a felt tip pen, have I put L on one piston and R on the other one? 
Obviously, if I put an L on one piston, standing for left, then the other piston is going to be the right-hand side one. I have a good reason for doing this. If I mark one piston with an L, and then that gets wiped off, I don't know which piston is which. Some of the parts of this engine are marked with number stamps. That's always useful, but I try not to use them. I don't like the look of them. Here, once again, I've been having a bit of a fiddle with the fixing nuts. This design will only work with the pieces of bar threaded at the end with fixing nuts adjusted to align the steam cylinder and the water cylinder perfectly. It shows me marking the left-hand piston with the letter L and then fitting the O-ring to it. Normally, when fitting new piston rings to a piston, whether they be cast iron or silicone, I would normally use some steam oil, but in this case, I actually forgot. I applied it later. I'm not going to throw these old O-rings away because they are in perfect condition. In the next episode, I need to separate the two halves of the pump. But for now, stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.